there are 257 uh, billion. 50, it came back to, two, to proposed was 257. Then it came back. Uh, okay, but but this year put together it's over 300. Yes. So is that good news? It's good news. I like to start from the good news. And uh, the first thing I would like to take from the uh, last speaker is on the impact of foreign exchange rates on uh, the budget um, assessment. We have to bear in mind that our spending is in Naira. Salaries have not increased at the rate of dollar. So it's not a direct translation, in my view, from what the exchange rate is straight to what the government is spending. On the other hand, the fact that a lot of payments for goods and services are in Naira the increase in the exchange rate they're using for the budget allows for more Naira to meet at the old um, um, rate. So that's something I would like us to bear in mind. The health budget has seen a decent growth overall um, from 250 in total and especially the capital side of things, 250 to 300 um, billion, now 301 billion is about just in line with the um, the national budget itself is about 20%, right? But if we look at the capital component, which is what delivers the goods and services mainly, that's what is used to procure the vaccines, the essential medicines and all of that, the infrastructure, it has grown from 28 billion naira to uh, 50, 51 billion. So that's a growth of about 80%. So in real terms, that's commendable, is appreciable. And also a big part of it is going to things that are under the purview of the headquarters of the Federal Ministry of Health. So a lot of projects that they've had in mind to do uh, in the uh, teaching hospitals and a couple of other places, primary health care centers. In fact, the focus is on primary health care centers at this time, revitalization. So they will be in a better position to do that. But borrowing from my uh, friend, the economist, in real terms, in terms of the fact that those vaccines and co are procured in dollars this time, so that growth is <laughs> maybe probably about 20% in real terms, in terms of the capital increase. Okay, Mr. Como, well, security. <laughs> okay, so for um, capital expenditure for security alone, defense, for instance, got about 140 billion. billion. Uh, that's okay. for capital expenditure. Now, I'm trying to find the bit for the recurrent expenditure. Okay. Adding, so that um, that's uh, two, three hundred and twenty-five. So put yeah. that together, that's almost uh, 500 billion. Okay. Is that good enough for where we are? Well, when you also say security, you have to enlarge it to include interior, MOI, so, because those are security services generally. So uh, when you say MOD, capital, you are talking about the armed the forces. So, uh, including yes. the interior. That, yes, everything cool. comes I mean, out to about a trillion. A trillion. Okay. Everything. Uh, that's uh, both the recurrent and capital side for interior and uh, MOD. And it suffers from the, some of the things that they've said. Now, the important thing here is let's look at the capital component. The um, recurrent is in Naira. So that's okay. I mean, I mean, it's not okay. It's not enough because... Uh, you find that there appears to be a stagnation of the figures. First of all, the recurrent for MOI is higher. Uh, it's about uh, 500 and something uh, billion MOI recurrent, sorry, 482 billion, because uh, you have more policemen and uh, uh, civil defense and those people, uh, 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 prison wardens, you know, uh, fire service people, you know, in that order. And then the recurrent for MOD is uh, 385. Uh, 325, sorry, uh, mm -hmm. because you have, well, a fewer soldiers, if you, if you know what I mean. But the uh, main thing there is the capital. Uh, how are we going to buy boats? We need naval gunboats to patrol the waters. Uh, we go around uh, uh, asking other nations to donate um, uh, platforms, boats for us to patrol our territorial waters. We are fighting a war in the northeast, uh, active war right now in the northeast, and uh, that uh, conflict is yet to be resolved and, um, and we have JTF operations in 34 states of the country and uh, these are all military personnel out there we have uh, all the operations going on in the Niger Delta region you know the land component operations not even the uh, littoral operations now the land component operations so these all require a lot of material they require uh, resourcing uh, and this is where we were. This is how come it was being alleged that for so very many years, 
the um, uh, the military was not being uh, resupplied with arms because uh, we had inadequate provisions of this nature in there. Because when you say you are providing for the whole MOD 140 billion for arms, I mean, is that for the army? Is that for the air force? Is that for the navy? Uh, or is that for the whole services, tri service? You know, I mean, then you have training in here. You have all the training components. So, I mean, there are so many things to do in there. Uh, let me tell you why this, what I'm saying is important. I, I don't want to take anything away from any other sector, but I think some sectors appear to have been unduly favored. Because if we build houses, we build power plants, and the bad guys go there and take them down, what have we achieved? Yet that appears to have been the, uh, you know, the kind of focus of this budget. We focus more, yeah, like you said, on infrastructure. This is good. We want to employ people, but there are smart ways. Look at what Roosevelt did. Um, you know, in the U.S., uh, which is um, a program uh, uh, to uh, get Americans employed, and uh, so you, you have you have other ways you can do this thing rather than uh, giving Julius Berger or whoever is, else is out there these uh, huge contracts to come in and build. And meanwhile, we don't have enough uh, guns, bullets, boats, and uh, planes for okay. our services while we have an active war on ground. That's my problem. We have active, I mean, we have, uh, look at all the killings. I just issued a statement yesterday. Look at the killings in Zamfara State, Kaduna State, uh, Taraba State. The, the whole country is uh, awash in uh, violence and, uh, and we have ungoverned spaces all over this country, what we call ungoverned spaces. So you have uh, uh, pastoralists coming from Mali to come and kill people in Nigeria because the place is not governed. To me, that is a bigger priority than, uh, you know, Whatever it is, else it is, they want to do. I don't want to knock any. I don't want to knock. I don't want to knock health or <laughs> education or whoever else. Mr. Please, Mr. I Nelson. think they are all important because when I'm sick, I want to get a competent healthcare. <laughs> but at the same time, I think first, I don't want anybody to shoot me. I think that's the job one. So there was a, the the picture painted here looks um, really bleak, but yet the president has said this budget of 2017. Will, will deliver economic recovery. Based on what Mr. What Mr. Komo has, the picture Mr. Komo has painted, and maybe you can just tie that in a little bit, how can this budget deliver? And your colleague talked about the fact that the exchange rate has actually depleted this huge budget that we seem to have. So how can it deliver? Well, it will not deliver recovery just by implementing the numbers in that budget. Uh, what, what will deliver recovery is those policies that will stimulate economic growth that is not fueled by the budget. There are very few countries that can actually stimulate the economy from the budget. When America was in recession, Obama did not stimulate the economy from the budget. He got the financial community, the financial institutions to put money. It goes the Federal Reserve to put money outside the budget. It wasn't a budget driven uh, process because how many people does the federal and all its governments in Nigeria employ? All of them put together, less than five million. Out of 170 million Nigerians, half of them of working population, let's say we have 80 million working population. So you don't do that from the budget. What you do is have policies that attract investment. And as Mr. Ekomo has said, you as government, we have to take care of defense. That is our job. We have to take care of health at the primary level. Okay. Okay. We have to take care of education at the primary level. All right. You, you, you've said something about policy, and so we just go on this quick break. When we come back, we'll look more into the policies that can help deliver on this um, 2017 budget to stay with us on Sunrise.